Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans today I'll be taking a look at this which is the new 8th Doctor figure from the Night of the Doctor minisode and here it is in its packaging. It's your standard collector series box layout with the purple and red rhombus graphics there. The current era Doctor Who logo appears at the top while the 8th Doctor from the Night of the Doctor collector figure is printed below and is of course part of the 5.5 inch slash 14 centimeter scale collector series. The window display is huge extending around to the side of the box giving us a good clear look at both the figure and his accessories. The back offers an image of the figure as well as a quote from the character which isn't actually from the Night of the Doctor. I thought they would have went with I'm a Doctor but probably not the one you were expecting or something like that but eh, what can you do. And there's a write up on the character which is slightly longer than the bios given to the other figures so if you want to read it then pause the video. So that's it for the box, let's move on to the figure itself. Alright so here we go, the 8th Doctor and to be honest I think this looks amazing. Some people have said the face sculpt doesn't look exactly like Paul McGann, but I would tend to disagree. I think the shape of the face is very evocative of McGann. It's slightly gaunt looking, you can see his cheekbones protruding through the skin. The creases and wrinkles, especially around his mouth and chin, really help to define his features and resembles how he looked in the minisode. The one issue I do have with the face is that the top eyelids are somewhat prominent, giving him a slightly tired or high expression. The hair the sculpt looks fantastic though, and it's a nice recreation of his scruffy looking curled style, while that light brown wash adds some depth, but there is a small amount of paint bleed on the sideburns there. Moving down to the torso, and the Doctor is wearing his green overcoat. This features some really nice detail, you can see the lapels with the buttonholes in them on both sides, as well as some buttons on the sides there too. Some seams are present on the sides, as well as on the back, where you can spot more buttons and just a ton of that creased and wrinkled material effect which really helps the coat look like fabric. The arms feature that creased effect too as well as his dirtied white shirt sleeves poking out at the wrists. The right hand is sculpted to hold his sonic screwdriver while the left is moulded to hold the chalice. Both feature detail of his individual fingers and thumbs. At the neck he's wearing his blue ascot while you can see the unbuttoned collar of his shirt sticking out over the coat. The waistcoat looks really great what with the buttons and crease and wrinkled material effect put to good use. A fob chain hangs from one side while the light bronze paint apps really sets it off well and also in keeping with his unkempt appearance the bottom button is undone there if you look closely. He's wearing a black belt with an intricate silver buckle detail while the trousers are grey but have this light brown effect over them to make them appear aged and worn. The crease and wrinkled material effect makes them look as though they've been stuffed into the boots and speaking of which they look great too they've been given a similar paint application as seen on the legs to make them look old worn and scuffed the sculpting of laces running up the shins can be seen as well as some creasing at the ankles while the undersides are black and feature some legal down a humble blind of so when it comes to detail put simply i love it Turning to articulation, and while the head can rotate, I'd advise not doing an exorcist twist, as this can shear the paint off the neck, but it can turn from side to side there with ease. The arms can do a full 360 at the shoulder, but are a little bit hindered by the coat. They can also move out to 90 degrees at this joint as well. A full 360 is found at the top of the arm, the elbow can bend into 90 degrees, and a full 360 is present at the wrist. The Doctor features full 360 degree waist articulation. The legs kick forward and back through 90 degrees and also move out to the sides but not by too much as the coat kind of gets in the way. They do offer a full 360 at the top of the leg, the knee bends into 90 degrees and there's another full 360 at the top of the boot. So when it comes to articulation, I'm impressed. Taking a look at accessories now and the 8th Doctor comes with three. First up we get Cassus Bandolier which technically the 8th incarnation of the Doctor never wore so it is kind of strange to see him packaged while wearing it. It is removable though which will please hardened nitpickers like myself. The detail on it is quite nice and it is different to the one seen on the War Doctor figure as that version was permanently sculpted onto the figure's chest. Next up we of course get the Doctor's trusty sonic screwdriver and I'm really impressed with this. For its tiny size the detail of the various sections is super sharp. You can see the red bullet inside the halo as well as that golden strip on the handle. This slots into the Doctor's right hand and it is a little bit difficult to get it in there but it is secured safely and it won't fall out of his grip in a hurry. Finally we get the Karn Chalice which just like the Sonic has some really nice detail on the handle and the cup section there itself. 
This dots primarily into the Doctor's left hand, but the right can be positioned to look as though he's grasping at it with both, like he does in the episode. This was an iconic moment for the 8th Doctor, so I'm really glad it was included. Comparing this new figure to some of the older 8th Doctors released, I really think that this is the best one available. I like the Enemy Within TV movie version which came with the 11 Doctors figure set, but the face just doesn't look right. While the alternate 8th Doctor head, which inexplicably came with the War Doctor, is great, but it just looks too wide, so the combination of the face sculpt plus the excellent attention to detail in the clothing makes the Night of the Doctor version the superior figure, in my opinion. And, of course, doing the bog standard size comparison, you can see that the 8th Doctor is around the same height as all the other figures from the larger 5.5 inch scale. So, overall, what do I think of this figure? Well, not only am I a huge fan of the 8th Doctor, but he was my Doctor when I was a little boy, and for years I've been quite frustrated with the fact that this rather basic looking figure was really the only one available. So with the release of this Night of the Doctor version, I am delighted to say that it was definitely worth the wait, as the detail, articulation and accessories make for one awesome 8th Doctor figure, which finally does Paul McGann's portrayal of the character justice, despite how limited his actual TV appearances may have been. If I had to point out a negative, I would say that while the accessories are great, I feel that a young John Hurt War Doctor swappable head should have been included too, which would make the bandolier make more sense. But as it stands, I'm happy with it and I can't complain. If you're a fan of the 8th Doctor and you're unsure of which figure to go for, <laughs> like there's much choice, I'd strongly suggest picking up this one. And if you want to see me completely fanboying for 15 full minutes, be sure to check out my interview with the man himself, Paul McGann, a link to which is in the description below. And so that brings us to the end of this review. I really hope you liked it. If you did and you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe for more videos and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.